What's up guys, it's Davey. We talk all things video games here, and I finally bought a retro gaming handheld, so let's talk about it. I feel like the hype is super crazy around these emulation handheld devices, and well, I kind of fell for it. Not really, I've been wanting one for a while. I just wanted to wait for the right one. And that leads me to the Ambernick RG 35XXH, which the H stands for horizontal. So if you don't know what this is, this is basically a handheld emulator and it runs arcade games all the way up to N64, some PSP and Dreamcast. So the first thing I want to talk about was why I actually wanted one of these. And I am a dad, so I have a year and a half old daughter. It's super hard to just sit down and, you know, play video games. So I wanted to be able to play like old Game Boy Advance games, especially. I love my Kirby's. And I'm also getting into some of the old Pokemon games, which I didn't really play Pokemon growing up. And I kind of wish I would have because it's been fun. So as of right now, I've been kind of playing it at night and at work. I've only had it a few days, so I'm still trying to figure it all out. And I have put a custom firmware on it, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. I want to look at the stock firmware with you guys first because a lot of people kind of like bash the stock firmware, which is not pretty at all by no means, but it works and... It gets you playing your games like straight out of the box. And this thing does take like five years to boot up, even with the custom firmware. Okay, here we go. So let me turn it down because that's gonna get annoying. So, all right, if you haven't seen this, basically you have your game folders right here and everybody recommends, what the videos I've seen, everybody recommends just use the RA, which is I think retro arc cores. I'm still new to this, so y'all bear with me. But it's got like PlayStation. So it doesn't have a lot. I got the 64 gig card in 64. And like I said, I basically wanted this for GBA. One cool thing is it has a favorites. So say Batman Begins. I don't want to scroll down for it every time. You just press start and then you can jump right into the game right here. Or we can jump out. Like I said, we just booted it up. Go to your favorites. Boom, and then here's all what I've been playing right now. As of right now, I've only been playing some Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, a little bit of Dragon Warrior, Pokemon Emerald, and then I've been playing Crash Bandicoot a lot. I'm really surprised on the performance on, on PlayStation. I've actually very enjoyed playing Crash on here. I thought the little joysticks were going to be kind of weird at first, but... I don't know. This thing's very sturdy, by the way. Like, I don't know. It rattles a little bit. Not, let me see. I'll put it to my, yeah, it rattles a little bit. So I know a lot of people are kind of nitpicky with that stuff, but it doesn't bother me. I mean, I played this last night in the bed and it's not too loud or anything. And what's nice about this, the PlayStation controls are actually already configured. Like your B is your X button, like, you know, for PlayStation. So it takes a little bit to get used to. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's nice. You don't have to really configure anything, and the joystick feels very nice. And when you want to hop out of a game, it's actually a hot key. You press the menu button, hold it down, and then press start. And then it pulls you back out of the game. Before I got this, I was using uh, Delta on my iPhone to emulate games that I wanted to play. Um, so let's take a look at those side by side. Okay, we're going to load up Kirby and the Amazing Mirror for Game Boy Advance. That's like probably my all-time favorite game. Put it a little bit on here. Let's just get to the main screen right here and then I'll load up my iPhone. What's cool about this is you can have the SP or you can turn it horizontal and it becomes Game Boy Advance. So let's see, start. Play a little bit more on this as I said. And so I feel like when it's horizontal on the iPhone, uh, it's pretty close. I can't really tell right here. Let's see, I think, I wanna say this is slightly bigger, the 35XXH. Can't tell, I think they're about the same though. I will say the iPhone is gonna be a little bit more vibrant and nice colors, but this, I mean, I can't complain. And I'm sure the video is not doing it justice. I mainly wanted this for the actual analog buttons. So that's why I wanted one of these mainly because I have trouble with like the D-pad on this a lot, like just kind of feeling, it does give you haptic feedback. That's one nice thing, but I like to be able to feel the buttons. 
Okay, let's power this down. Next thing I want to look at is the custom firmware that I actually flashed onto this micro SD. So wait for this to power down all the way and then I'll pull the old one out. And if you want to do this, um, and if you want to download these custom firmwares, there's plenty of tutorials out there. I would not be able to do a good tutorial on that because I didn't know what I was doing myself. So we'll load this up. This is Botticera. So it's going to have a different load screen on there. We'll wait for that to boot up. Okay, so this is Kariki or Botticera. I don't really know like which one to call it, but I call it Kariki. Um, there's also this one in Newly, and there's a there's a few of them that I was looking at, but this one seemed the most simple to me to flash and do everything. Um, so let's see, we have. Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, and your ports, Mega Drive, which is a Sega Genesis. I don't have this all the way set up yet, but let's see. I'll jump into Super Nintendo. And then on this custom firmware, it changes your B button to your like function button. So everything is to click with your B button now. But, I mean, these load up just fine. And you can also connect to Wi-Fi and use Scraper to get all your box art. Let's load up some Zombies Ate My Neighbor. This is a fun game if you haven't ever played it. Just to show you guys some of the gameplay. I mean, everything runs smooth. You have to save all the civilians and stuff and the maps and the baby. This does run smooth, like I said. Um, no issues with any of them, except I've had a few issues, which I'll go over in just a second. Okay, so that's Zombies Ate My Neighbor. Let me, it's same hotkey to jump out of a game. So I'm going to jump back into Game Boy Advance. Okay, this part, I want to look at Game Boy Advance on here. I don't know if I didn't set something up right, but just I'll show you what it's doing and leave your comments down below and help me out because I'm really lost and I don't know what to do. So Game Boy Advance works, but like say, let's see, we'll load into like, uh, we'll do Kirby again. So it pulls up warning the system has missing BIOS files, but it still runs the game but it says the game may not work correctly, but everything's been working fine. I put the BIOS files in, at least the ones I thought were supposed to go there, and still it's saying that. So I don't know, but the games run fine as far as I can tell. I mean, I just don't know what I'm doing wrong with the BIOS files. So if you could help me out with that. Also, another troubleshooting issue that I'm having, I can't figure out how to get PlayStation to show up. I put games and everything in here and they just don't show up. So if anybody could help me figure out the PlayStation setup, that'd be much appreciated. All in all, I do like this custom firmware. It runs everything. I don't have a lot of games on here yet. I'm still loading everything up. But the only issues I've had is with Game Boy Advance and getting my PlayStation, original PlayStation to get on here. Uh, I haven't even messed with ports yet. It does come with a custom or some games already loaded on here. Um, it's the original Doom. So this thing's pretty cool. I do enjoy this thing a lot. But yeah, I'm just having a few issues setting up. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever even set one of these up. So the last thing I want to talk about is uh, do I actually recommend one of these to somebody and who this is for? If you're somebody that just wants to pick this thing up and start playing your games, I think the, the stock firmware is actually going to be okay. It is kind of ugly and, you know, clunky, but it works. It comes with games on it. So, I mean, you're good in that department. But if you're somebody like me that's never actually worked on one of these, I'm having a little bit of trouble setting it up. Um, but other than that, I mean, I got it working. Everything works fine, except I can't get PlayStation to pull up. But, I mean, I have no complaints. This thing is, like, awesome. I don't know why I haven't bought one sooner. So, yeah, that's the Ambernic RG35XXH. And I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I think that's all I've got to say with this. I don't really make videos like this. So like I said, I'm new to this. And if you could, leave all your comments down below to help me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.